It has been heavily requested I check out this Tier Zoo channel. I've heard they look at the world as some type of video game and which animal is like a class you get to play as. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start with our humans OP. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. Don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's get right into it. This episode was sponsored by Skillshare. Video game intro. <laughs> Human beings. Are they as overpowered as the game's community would lead you to believe? Short answer, yeah. Who's the game's community? Are they people in the afterlife or the pre-life deciding what class to be? I don't know. <laughs> They're the most meta-defining build of all time, and the undisputed top build in the current expansion. But believe it or not, this current wasn't always expansion. the case. Humans used to get bodies left and right on a daily basis by other players. And it took a pretty long time before the player base learned how to actually make use of the human build's unique abilities. Took a while to grow. The story of the human's rise to dominance is a really interesting one. And so today, we're going to do an in-depth look at the human's abilities, their strengths, and their weaknesses. Because yes, they do have weaknesses. We'll also go over notable matchups, and finally look at the steps human players took in order to reach their dominant status. First, their unique abilities. I touched on this topic in my video about primates, but I'll recap here and also go into more detail. First off the bat we have their ability to throw things. Other builds sure. can throw things, but humans can do so harder, faster, and further than anyone else. The reason for this is their body structure. Bipedal this builds are cool. tough to balance, both in the game development sense and the center of mass sense. Throwing an item with any real force behind it requires serious balance, achieved only by having shorter arms and longer legs. This is why humans can launch projectiles at deadly speeds, whereas other primates kind of just lob things without putting much effort into it. If they tried to, they would knock themselves over. Even if chimpanzees could figure out how to craft a spear, there's no way they could throw it hard enough to do craft any significant a spear. damage. Huh. Next, their stamina like regeneration. Minecraft. Humans can chase down anything. If you try to run from a human, you might outspeed them initially, but you'll run out of stamina much sooner than they will, and they'll catch up to you while you're in your weakened state. This is partially because of their superior balance again, but mostly it's because of the human build's unique choice to not spec into fur. This gives them access to the extremely broken ability Sweat. Every <laughs> other current sweat. build that's decent at distance running recharges stamina by using the move Pant. This works great, but it does require the user to stop running. Sweat, on the other hand, works better while moving, <laughs> massively extending the distance a human player can run. That's They've got so a few good. other important abilities that are essential to their kit, but aren't unique to humans. Well, so what are these stats? So we got intelligence, which humans are going to go through the roof. That that makes sense. I mean, after all, humans have civilizations, engineering, nuclear power plants. You don't see any other animals making nuclear power plants. There was that one case of one making itself artificially, but that had nothing to do with other life forms. That was just a natural seam that somehow formed a critical mass. But power, not much in the way of defense. Yeah, compared to other animals, I, I can certainly see that. But in terms of defenses, I think we're you're just, just looking at a naked human, like not with any um, weapons, tools, vehicles, buildings, that sort of thing. Mobility is interesting. He just explained that. Health and yeah, not much STL. Looks like stealth. Their ability to speak is unique among mammals, but some birds can pull it off too. In humans, the ability to speak allows them to use one of their signature moves, Teach, which drastically boosts the skill point, <laughs> there you game, go. mitigating the main penalty a player receives upon getting a game over. A game humans over. and birds also share another unique trait, which is That's being awesome. able to stand upright. Standing upright is extremely useful for dealing with stealth builds that might normally be using tall grass to hide. Tool use also might be thought of as a human-exclusive move, and it certainly is the most effective in humans. But True. it turns out a pretty wide array of other builds can also do it. Birds? Kind of. Not on the same scale, though. I mean, maybe some, yeah, some hand tools. Primates, or cephalopods, beat tools. and even fish can use tools on occasion. But sweating and throwing? Uniquely human. Now onto their weaknesses. And yes, it's true that currently most human players can subvert these with their crafting skill. But it's important to recognize that without equipment, the human build isn't necessarily unstoppable. The decision to not have fur granted humans a massive buff to mobility at the cost of stealth. Mm. 
In the Mammal faction, fur is a prerequisite to all the major stealth abilities like camouflage, and lack of <laughs> stealth abilities means getting in close on their targets is a serious challenge. The human build's lack of fur also means they have very low These cliffs are amazing. Both from physical attacks and from environmental effects. Bare skin offers almost zero armor, to the point where even players from lower weight classes have no trouble dealing damage to humans. And bare skin also takes quite a bit of damage yeah. from the sun, too. Humans are also pretty limited. That just goes to show you that even non-ionizing radiation can cause problems, because uh, UVA and UVB that cause the sunburn, um, yeah, it'll still... I wonder if people would take sunburns more seriously if we just called them radiation burns, because that's what they are, just a different type of radiation. When it comes to the power stat, physically, they're the weakest of the great apes, and don't really have any good options for dealing damage. <laughs> they lack the classic high damage bite attack that nearly every that so other non-herbivorous build relies on, instead having to resort to blunt attacks like punch and kick, which we all know aren't very effective against builds that have thick fur or skin. Yeah. The last major weakness I can see is that they're pretty bad at dealing with stealth. The lack of night vision means darkness yes. can really hamper their ability to locate targets. And their lack of a strong sense of smell means camouflage is especially useful I love the way he's them. explaining it. Okay, now let's talk about matchups. Obviously, a key feature of the human build is being able to craft equipment. Given basic equipment, yeah. like low-level armor and hunting gear, the human's best matchup is going to be medium-large mammals. Unlike blunt damage, piercing damage is quite effective versus builds with thick hide. But on defense, they're actually pretty awful. Also, guns? The human's only <laughs> option on defense against a large mammal is intimidation, unless they've got some crazy high-level equipment. Okay, yeah. <laughs> high-level equipment. <laughs> there you go. I'll make a video on power creep later. The Power classic creep. human equipment cannot <laughs> stop a charging tank main unless the intimidate attempt works. Unless they're in an but actual overall, tank. This matchup is one of the reasons humans Don't know who does top tier. With tanks, though. Hardly any builds have favorable matchups against tanks. But that's not to say humans don't have their counters, though. As I said before, stealth can be really effective against them due to their lack of a keen sense of smell and night vision. Humans have the ability to win pretty much any fight as long as they've got time to prepare. But taken True. by surprise, humans have a lot fewer options. Another thing humans have trouble dealing with is flight. <laughs> Even when a human has a ranged weapon, players with high aerial mobility are pretty safe during flight. Now, as far as I know, there aren't any bird builds powerful enough to one-shot humans, which is important because blunt attacks like punches are actually quite effective against birds. I thought he was going to go into, like, bird strikes against planes, so even when you can fly, they can still bring down planes in certain situations, which is interesting. Birds have hollow bones that are resistant to tension and torsion, but not compression. This is the opposite of mammal bones, which are resistant to compression and tension, but not torsion. The point is, birds aren't the best choice against humans, but flight has been unlocked by four different classes in the game. Birds, which we just discussed aren't a good choice. Bats, which do even less damage than birds. <laughs> Reptiles, which unfortunately had their aerial builds banned in past- Though bats can be responsible for starting certain types of pandemics, so I wouldn't count them out too much, but maybe they're, to use the gaming analogy, they're using some sort of summon or minion subclass that they can use to uh, defeat their enemies. 1.3.1, and insects. Flying eusocial insects have by far the best matchup versus humans <laughs> in the entire game. Humans have zero counterplay against a swarm of stinging insects. I mean, sure, there are special items that they can use to combat <laughs> Special, uh, yeah, prepared, PPE. But the amount of human mains who've chosen that as one of their prestige abilities is pretty small. Prestige humans lack abilities. Of fur means they have no innate. So nuclear engineering is my prestige ability, according to this. That's that's a video game term. I'm I guess less familiar with. Defense against stings. Stings also have the chance to proc the Amphalaxis debuff, which can actually lead to a game over. And it's for this reason that the high score for human eliminations belongs to the Africanized honeybee, known better by its community-given name, the killer bee. Mm. And even if the stings don't proc the allergic reaction effect, they will still definitely achieve their primary goal of dropping their resolve to zero and granting you control over the territory. <laughs> and we can see that lately the viability of killer bees has only been oh, growing wow. yeah, now that they've yeah. expanded their territory outside of Africa. I remember hearing about that all the time Which back then. Which brings me to my main point. Are humans overpowered? Well, just like the Africanized honeybee, humans really only I would became say okay yes. once they escaped the African server and invaded other areas. <laughs> Notice how humans took down okay. megafauna across every terrestrial server except Africa. The African tank mains have the matchup experience and counterplay options to deal with the vast array of skills humans have access to. But the rest of the community was totally unprepared to deal with the rapid invasion of new human mains invading their competitive scene. In other words, the devs could have prevented the massive destabilization of the current meta if they'd region locked humans. <laughs> Starving. Staying competitive in the meta requires a good player constantly be leveling up their skills. 
And that's just it. Not only like individual skills that he mentions up, but it's kind of the whole... The real reason is that we formed these massive civilizations that enabled us to produce uh, feats of wonder like nuclear power plants, for instance, because no, no individual can do it by themselves. I, I'm a nuclear engineer, and that's not something that I could do by myself. I would need a team of builders, electricians, mechanics, um, business and financial experts so I could have enough money to, to finance the operation. Lawyers, uh, quality specialists, regulatory specialists, and the list goes on to about 500 or so different specializations that you need in order to create something like that. And it's just the ability to have these... To basically have your skills in very different things and all work together. That's the, uh, that's the real beauty of it all. Um, that you don't have to, it's not like that you're not just one, um, one individual character that knows anything. It would be like your entire guild or clan or whatever the right uh, <laughs> gaming term is to uh, combine, pull their resources and create something extraordinary. What a fascinating idea combining using a video game analogy to talk about animals and how how humans are relative to other animals that's that's really cool <laughs> thank you so much for the recommendation and thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time